This is the Q-Style M15, bringing along with it the final death rattle of every dongle in the market within this year and the past. Shall we take a look? First and foremost, what the hell is the M15? Well, this unit is a dongle, like the Apple Lightning dongle, converting that socket to a headphone jack so you can connect wired headphones. But unlike the Lightning connector, this brings with it high fidelity, fantastic, superb sound quality. And who is this for? This is for somebody who wants to take their in-ear monitors on the go, who wants to forgo the wireless route and actually want high fidelity music. So let's take a tour around the unit, do some unboxing and see what we get. This unit is $250 on the Q-Style website. Thank you so much for sending this unit in for review, it's very, very much appreciated. We get an understated box, it looks like a large cigarette box. And then front and center, once we unbox this, we get the unit. This thing is tiny. It looks like a chewing gum packet. Setting that aside for now, let's look at the box and see what else we get. We don't need that. We get some documentation discussing what the unit can do. And then we get two cables. These are a fabric jacketed USB-C to USB-C cable and USB-C to USB-A cable. As you can see within the box, you do not get USB-C to Lightning like this one here. This one was bought off of Amazon, but if you want a cable such as this, which is the same fabric material, um, you can order it on the website for going one of these ones, I believe if I'm not mistaken, but it's easily obtainable for the iOS users. Okay, so let's take a quick tour around the unit. As you can see, this unit is very small. It's uh, machined out of aluminium, CNC machined. It's really beautiful. Tolerances are really tight, no creaks. And up top, you get this beautiful transparent cover showing the guts of the unit. Rear end in the unit, we get USB-C. On the right hand side, we get the high and low gain switch, which is quite clicky and satisfying. And up top, we have two headphone jack outputs. We have a single-ended TRS 3.5 for your very sensitive in-ear monitors. And on the other side, we have a 4.4 TRRS balanced output. And that's it, that's the unit. When the unit is on, you get three indicating lights, green for standard output 1644, red for high res, and magenta for MQA if that's your thing and if you're running Tidal. Let us glance at the specifications on your screen here now. As we can see, this unit measures extremely well. Dynamic range is at 130 dB, which is absolutely freaking insane. THDN at 0.0003 and output power, this unit can drive 32 to 300 ohm headphones at 11.96 and balanced at 22.6 milliwatts. Driving the M15 is a CMA's patented designed CMA current drive SIP modules. There's a pair of them within here and there are four application circuits driving your headphones. Um, current drive units on the market are quite rare and I think they do something special here. It's not full current drive um, like some of the amplifiers you might have heard of. I believe there is two stages. Uh, the current drive mode is uh, the DAC output stage and between the final application output of the unit itself. Um, but what this means to you and me is that ultra low distortion very, very low impedance and a one megahertz bandwidth. Um, and testing this unit sonically, a lot of these numbers that most of the time I disregard come into play. So we've discussed who this is for, what it is, and some of the specifications. Let's talk about the most important aspect of this unit, its sound quality. 
So now we've come over to our test bench um, and there's going to be a lot of comparisons, especially with this beast here, the Cord Mojo 2. This is an $800 unit now, I believe. And there are some other ones like the Apple Lightning dongle, the ES100, which its tonal balance is very relevant to this uh, conversation. And then obviously the IFI Go Blue. And this one is a USB-C to a DAC out uh, from XMEMS. They've got these incredible drivers that we will get onto and talk about uh, hopefully within the coming year. But setting that aside, how does the CMA15 sound? Well, the CMA15 is liquid, transparent, high resolution. It's one of those moments in life where in audio, you find yourself going, okay, I've heard a lot of things in the dongle department before, and now I have purchased a DAP. And when you find you've come across that experience between the dongle and the DAP, you literally stand still for a moment and are so shocked by the upgrade. It just, you can't help smiling, genuinely. And that was the upgrade I got when I went from all of these dongles to the M15. Its sound characteristic is neither warm nor cold. It's liquid. My first impressions was, okay, I absolutely love the Hollow Audio Serene. It's a $3,300 pre with a three watt output that you can drive headphones on. And the tonal balance of the M15 is so similar to the Serene that instantly I find myself gravitating towards it when I have all of these other units here at CMA for testing. That gives you a rough breakdown of how the unit performs sonically. Starting with a sonic characteristic breakdown, let's start with the stage. The unit stage is very wide. Impressively so, actually, for a dongle. It beats the Go Blue and it definitely beats the ES100. I think it goes toe to toe with the Mojo 2. For classical music and for live music, the width of the stage is definitely wider than the Mojo 2. The Mojo 2 is more spherical. It's more 3D and holographic around your head, but tightly packed in. But CMA M15 tends to stretch the information so that you've got this wide stage on either side of you. The depth is pretty distinct and defined. Instruments are well layered behind each other, but the angle aspect of instruments going from over your shoulder on the right hand side to in front of you on the left that way, you find the layering in that dimension is better on the Mojo 2. But laterally, the informational that you're provided from the Mojo 2, which is three times the price and one of the best amplifier DACs on the market under the $1,000 for on the go, is slightly more distinct. So over your right shoulder, all the way to the left in front of you, you find layering more distinct and defined on the Mojo 2. And yet, right to left, Front to back, the M15 keeps up with the Mojo 2 without any problems. I think the fact that the Mojo 2 has got this holographic nature in a 360 spherical soundscape is what's giving the impression that it has better layering at angles. But width-wise and depth-wise, the M15 is right alongside the Mojo 2 and it's absolutely incredible because this thing's $250. It's not even a 15th of the size, doesn't have a huge battery inside, and it's not programmable FPGA. The DAC inside the M15 is the Sabre chip ESS, ES9281AC. It's off the shelf, and yet it doesn't sound like Sabre chips anymore. Thank science that the glare has been mitigated and is no longer an issue. So stage is pretty good, especially on IEMs and not too bad at all on over-ear headphones. I have consistently been using the Atrium, the Lyrique, the Sipka SV023, 
on this unit without any drawbacks. In fact, Lyrique was so good. When I was away from CMA, I was away for five weeks, I had the Diablo with me, I had the Mojo 2 with me, but those two turned into paperweights because I forgot the cables. The M15 was my only amp deck and I felt as though I could have reviewed the Lyrique without any problems. Giving you guys a thorough, in-depth analysis of those headphones, which is unheard of. For dongles. I have tested many of them and we've reviewed quite a few on the channel. Qdelix, the BTR3, BTR5, ES100. The only thing that can keep up, and I think in some areas the M15 is better, is the Mojo 2. Base region, in comparison with the Mojo 2, the Mojo 2 feels a lot more dense, but the M15 feels linear, impactful, Quick and nimble and textural information is absolutely fantastic. Those slams you definitely feel on the M15. Impact and sub bass rumble is not deprived from the sonic characteristics of the song. Mid bass has wonderful punch, absolutely fantastic, and the upper bass region feels full bodied without making the treble region sounded thin or overly forced or coming forward too much so that it encompasses the lower mid-range. No, it's a linear rise to the top and climbing to the top, the mid-range is open, lush, very well layered, very well textured, especially guitars, acoustic guitars, vocals, cellos and violins, etc. that reside in this area. All of the frequency response seems to be supporting each other. The treble region is quite detailed. I would say in regards to comparisons with the Mojo 2, it might fall a little bit behind, but we're only talking one or 2%. It's smooth and it's never fatiguing. Its synergy is fantastic, which we will talk about momentarily with headphones, especially with Atrium. Let's move on to textural information, timbre and vocal presentation. Textural information is very well received on this unit. It definitely walks alongside the Mojo 2 at three or four times the price, which is just insane. Tamba is excellent. This is one area where I can safely say you will never think about Tamba and tonal balance on the go when you're using this unit. It's quite remarkable, genuinely, it completely blows the IFI Go Blue, the ES100, the BTR5 out of the water. It's, it's in another league. It's, it's like a DAP, a DAP under $600. It genuinely is fantastic. Vocal presentation is smooth, without any peaks, full bodied, and it pops up right here within the sound stage. So it feels as though the vocals actually bounce off around itself so that it's not a flat image. I am genuinely impressed by this unit. Its power capability allows for headphones to dig deep into the sub bass, draw out detail where detail is required, and subtly smooth over certain harshness, for example, from metal tracks and it gives you a beautiful presentation that just warrants listening time. Let's talk about some of the best synergies I found with this unit with headphones and IEMs. Coming back over to the workbench here, I found an incredible synergy with this beast here, the Meze Audio Lyrique. Now, this unit itself has a little harshness around three kilohertz um, where with certain equipment, if the pads have not broken in and the drivers have not broken in, it really does sometimes play overly trigger happy with certain pop songs, for example. On this unit, I found the layering to be beautiful, the imaging to be absolutely exceptional, mid bass punch was there, sub bass rumble dug deep, and on my vacation, when I was away for five weeks, this unit with the M15 together became my daily driver. And I think I must have spent over 200 hours listening to music. It was exceptional. Sivga SV023, this beautiful headphone. Um, we reviewed this quite a while back. If you're interested in the review, click on the card somewhere up there or down there. Um, this one I prefer with EQ. 
because there are certain spikes in the mid-range and a certain treble forwardness in the 6 kilohertz region where I found on a lot of amps um, without EQ this was a bit tiring for me but it subtly smoothed over certain aspects there and it was highly enjoyable. Definitely not as much as Lyric, that was absolutely exceptional due to that liquid sound signature, but a good performer nonetheless. Then we have the IEM bunch over Mia. Now we have quite a few of them. This one being the Mad. Which one are you? You are the Mad 16. This unit is a super flagship IEM at $2,600 with 16 balanced armatures per side. Now the review for the custom variants of these will be coming up shortly, uh, hopefully before CanJam New York. This has been my daily driver over the last three days with the M15. It drives them absolutely perfectly. Obviously these scale tremendously on equipment such as the tube amplifier Canon HA300 Mark II's over there or the CMA15 flagship amp DAC which we will get onto. I promise you that is absolutely... You'll see. Subscribe, press the notification icon if you're interested in that and trust me I think it's a game changer. Uh, so this has been performing really well. Um, genuinely impressed. Some of these other ones here, like the Kato and the, what are you, the, ah, uh, this one is the Litshaw S12s and I think we have the Moondrop variations, uh, those perform really well. I don't actually find that there are any problems with IEMs as a rule. Tonal balance is safe, liquid, neutral, musical. Honey poured over thunder. I don't think there's anything to worry about at all. Um, there's enough edge to give warm IEMs a good attack and there is subtle enough smoothness to give peaky IEMs the treatment they deserve. Absolutely impressed. Let's talk about some of the caveats. I'll be honest with you, Setting aside the fact that in my situation, I'm an iPhone user, uh, I had to pick up a Lightning to USB cable and the one in the box over there was USB to C to C. For the first time, I think ever, I just don't find any gripes with this. I can't find anything wrong with it. Power is sufficient for a dongle and it drives atriums and Lyric perfectly fine. That current drive technology is incredible. I hope a lot more manufacturers develop and look into this area of tech. You get balanced, you get single-ended, it's beautifully designed, you can see the internals. I don't have any gripes and the price point to performance ratio is off the charts. So conclusion, should you buy an M15? Yes. Does it replace the Go Blue? Unless you need Bluetooth? Without a doubt. Do you need a DAP underneath $600 if you've got this? No. So let's do the scores. The M15 for 2022, setting aside all of these other dongles, putting the final nail in a lot of coffins of these dongles. Q-Style M15 gets five tigers across the board. Absolutely exceptional. And if you like reviews such as these, and you want to get them before anyone else, consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get access to me on the private Telegram chat, where we discuss these units before the review is even out, and as I go through the review process, and you get access to the early reviews before it goes live on YouTube. I will see you in the next one. Peace.